Today I decided I would do kind of an Easter theme since Easter is almost here. And I'm going to do an Easter type garland. Uh, that's really easy to make. It's an egg shape. So I just cut out of a piece of paper, just an egg shape. I fold it in half, cut it like you would a heart. Uh, the other things you're going to need are paint. And I have the colors in the rainbow, except I also have pink. So I have red and pink. They have orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and these are just some from another time. Uh, you're going to want to wet those, and then you're going to want a brush. Now what we're going to do here first does not require any skill. This is perfect for little kids. Uh, so a big brush works great, and I'll show you. What, what we're going to do is kind of just make some watercolor effects. Oh, also you're going to want to have some salt and some saran wrap, and I'll show you why in a little bit. And we'll do just one basic color first, or not color. We're gonna just do kind of a marbled effect. So I'm gonna wet the whole paper really well. And I didn't tape this down because we're gonna put one layer down and call it good. You could put more than one layer down if you want, but I'm just gonna put one layer down. And go pretty close to the edges. My my egg shape is about the size. I can get two eggs out of this piece. This is a five by seven. I would recommend. I wanted to do different colors, so I have a bunch of different five by seven pieces. If you want to do all the same color, they're going to turn out a little bit different no matter what. But um, I'm going to do a blue. And remember, with watercolor, even if it seems pretty bold, it's going to. Um, dry a lot lighter. So blue, let's do some purple. Some more blue over here. I want some pink. That wasn't a lot of pink. Drop it in there. It doesn't matter how much water, it's all gonna mix in. And again, get close to that edge. If you can. This is great for kids because they can just do whatever. And then I am going to take just some dots of color, just more bold color, put them out through there. You can do dots, you don't have to do dots. You can just leave it like it was. All right, now I am going to just let that dry. And then we'll do another one. I'll show you a different. So that's just kind of a marble technique. And you don't want to stir that too much. So if your kids are doing it, make it splotchy and leave it splotchy. <laughs> okay. We'll do the next one. I'm going to actually do probably the same colors because the ones that I'm going to show you that I've done previous were all very light yellow and orange and red springy colors, not so much of this darker blue and purple and whatnot. So again, wet the whole piece of paper. And make sure it's all wet. You may have to kind of look at it in the light, different angles. Again, I'm gonna go with, I think I'll start with a pink this time. Do some purple. That was a lot of purple. That's all right, because it's going to dry lighter. Get some blue. And just remember the colors that don't mix well are the complementary colors and the primary colors when you go across from them. Anything like blue and orange is going to make brown. Purple and yellow are going to make brown. Green and red will make brown. So you kind of want to avoid those because when you mix them, like right now, the pink and the purple, they're just going to make, or the pink and the blue is just going to make purple. So no matter which way I go, no matter how much I mix it, I may end up with a lot of purple, but I'm not going to end up with brown. So, oops, I did purple. Now I want blue. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take some salt on this one. You don't need a lot. And this is just regular table salt. And I'm going to sprinkle it on. 
And you saw me do this with the Valentine cards. We did some hearts like this. And what's going to happen is the salt's going to draw the water to it. And it's going to leave kind of a cool pattern. All right, we're going to call that good. And we're going to push that one off to the side. And we'll do one more. And again, we're going to wet the whole paper. This is the one you're going to need the saran wrap with. And I got salt all over my table. That's all right. Painting's a little messy sometimes. That's okay. Watercolor's nice because it washes out of everything most of the time. Some watercolors have a little bit of an oil base and they're harder to get out. But most watercolor just washes right out. Okay, same colors, like I said, because I've already done some of the other colors. And as you can see, this is pretty quick. The biggest, longest part of this process is going to be the drying time. And you can speed that up a little bit, the hair dryer, if you want. Um, just remember that, like the salt one, if it blows the salt off, then it's going to be, it might mess up your finish that you're looking for. And it doesn't, it actually doesn't really take that long to dry. Okay, I'm going to dot in some color. And you can flick it off your brush. I just don't want to flick it on the other cards, so I'm not going to flick those. But, you know, you could get some on there and tap and it flips. A little pink. Okay, now I'm going to take my saran wrap. The saran wrap, you want it to be bunchy. So we're going to lay it down a little bit and then we're going to scrunch it. Scrunch it, scrunch it, scrunch it. And we're going to let it dry like that. And everywhere it's darker, or everywhere it's pulled the paint off, it'll be white, or not quite white, because the paint does stain the paper a little bit. But it's going to give us a cool marbled effect. And you can make it as marbled as you want by how you pull it and push the saran wrap. And this one's fun for the kids because it's instant. You can see that it's uh, changed the look of the paint already. Okay, so we are going to let these dry. Um, one other option, so if you want to go and purchase some liquid masking, you can also mask out some sort of a pattern. This one I did just on um, just another 5x7 piece. One thing you need to remember, you do not want to blow dry this to dry it or it will be stuck to your paper. It will rip paper off when you go to take it off. And also you want to let it dry completely. So we're going to do this one really quick as well. And this one I might do some of the other colors. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And you'll be able to see. And the nice thing about this liquid masking is it is, you can tell where it is because it's yellow, but you can buy different colors of liquid masking. There's gray and things like that. But it's nice to be able to see where you're at. And when you go to let the paint dry, do not blow dry it with the liquid masking either, or it will not come off. Okay. Wet it down. I think I'm going to do a red. Bright red on this one. And so you can see those, there's little flowers there. They kind of pop. I don't know if I'll even do another color. I like that red. Maybe we'll add some drops of other color here. Maybe I'll do some orange. And I use to drop this so it just it doesn't come with any kind of applicator. You don't want to use a nice brush with this. So if you're going to put this liquid masking down, I actually use my palette knife. I'm going to add some orange in there. And then 
palette knives aren't super sharp tipped, but they are sharp enough that you can get some fairly thin lines with those. Let's drop in some yellow. Whoops. And we'll call that good. Okay, so I am going to let all of these dry and then we will come back. All right, so these things have dried for the most part and we'll show you what we got here. So this is just the marbled texture. Uh, this one is the salt. Right. That kind of gives it a cool texture. Um, actually, the only one that might not be dry is, well, I'll show you kind of the texture we got. But this one's not quite dry because it had a strand wrap on it, but that gives a cool texture. We'll use this one here in a minute. I'm going to let that one dry a little bit more. And then this is the one that I use the, um, what's it called? Masking, liquid masking. You'll see, this is like my favorite part. You can see how it keeps the white paper white under there. And then you just go through with your finger and peel it off. But again, this one don't use a hair dryer with, and it also takes a long, oh, I shouldn't say a long time to dry, but you need to let it dry completely before you start peeling it off. Otherwise it's going to make, it's gonna pull your paper with it and tear your paper, which you don't want. But if you use a really high quality, like this is Arches uh, paper, if you use a really high quality cotton paper, then it won't, it's not as likely to tear. If you use a pulp style paper, like the Stanford or the cheap ones that you buy from Walmart, it usually it'll rip the paper sometimes, even if you've waited long enough. And even if you haven't used a hair dryer. So you can see how easy that is to get off. You can also use an eraser or whatnot. That's fun. Okay, so I'm going to show you the way to make the garland. So I'm going to take my egg-shaped um, pattern. And I'm going to start with this one. That was not totally dry, but I like to turn it over on the back. And this egg shape is a little bit, just slightly too big for this to get to, but if you cut right inside the, oh, if I can draw around it. If you cut right inside of your outline and keep that egg as far over as you can, you'll be able to get pretty close to two. This is why I also want to paint, and you know, if you use a bigger piece of paper, or if you match the shape to the size of your paper, you know, you could use an eight and a half by 11 and probably get all these out of that. Anyway, you're gonna take that, what did I do with my scissors? And then you're just gonna cut around it. Like I said, I just kind of go inside of that egg-shaped line just because I need a little bit more. Finish that off and see I didn't get quite close enough there, but, but there's my egg. Let me just cut this one out really quick.
So, next thing, oh, let me show you the other ones. So this one was the same technique as this. It's just, um, I used yellow as a base and then I just dotted in the red and the green and the blue and then it just, and I put the salt on when it was fairly wet. This one it was a little bit drier. So, but I kind of like the, what it looks like there. I like them both for different reasons. Um, this one was kind of like, where did it go? This one, I have just the two different, just the colors. And this one I tried a crayon, but it didn't really work very well. You can't really see it, the white crayon, but that's okay. So I'm gonna leave that like that. So that's kind of another color variation. And then this one is the same as this with the saran wrap, only it's the greens and yellows. And I like that. I like that on the A a lot. Anyway, so as you can see, some of these are punched. What did I do with my whole punch? Okay, so I'm gonna show you the garland. I'm, I punched twice two holes in there because I want the ribbon to come up through and down through so that when it's hanging off something, it hangs flat, it doesn't turn on its side. So just punching two holes in all of them. just chose a purple ribbon, just a satiny ribbon, and then I took this end and I taped it. Let me make sure you can see that really well. Taped it so that you can, I folded it in half so that it's not um, coming undone as I go along. So this way it'll keep it from fraying. And you see, whoops. And you see how it's going to hang flat. So I'm going to just um, uh, thread these on. And I haven't cut it yet because I didn't know how long I'd want it. So anyway, just pull it down through. Easter garland hung up on my mantle excuse the mess anyway uh, that's a fun little project for kids or even just for your house decoration or whatnot but I hope you try this and I hope that yours turns out well and if you like this tutorial if you could give me a thumbs up and a subscribe I'd appreciate it thank you